nine, nine o'clock on first and third Sundays if you ever want to come by and and uh, and be a part of the class and just kind of see how see how we roll. Uh, but uh, as far as this and being part of the Fruit of Forgiveness Ministry, I am a uh, I am a nurse. I've been in the medical field for uh, this is my thirtieth year. So I started in nineteen ninety five. Uh, I'm turning 30 this year. You're turning 30 this year? <laughs> wow. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm a teacher as well. Um, I have been, I've taught uh, within the medical field for 12 years and worked as a nurse too, sometimes at the same time. You'll typically find, I've always said this, you'll typically see that most nurses have at least two jobs. <laughs> That's a lot of times just what you see. They have their main job and they have their PRN job. This is a very common thing. So I did that for years and years as well. Right now, I'm just teaching. Uh, and teaching is something that I really, really enjoy. I love to teach. It's just, I think it's just one of the things that God made me to be. Um, so that's what I'm doing primarily right now. And as a nurse, um, I look at the Bible, and I've done this for years, <laughs> and I just see the body everywhere in the Bible. And, and our bodies... And all the systems within our bodies just scream God's word. Um, I'm actually working on putting something together right now to, to, to show each body system and put scripture with it to show how each body system is an example and a reflection of God's word. Just to give you a quick, just to give you a quick example of that, obviously we're talking about focusing on the immune system today, but just to give you an example of that. Uh, the endocrine system is about hormones and how the body, uh, uh, how the brain functions and communicates with the body via hormones is communication. Prayer. The nervous system is the same way. It just does it faster. It's still communication. It's prayer. Sometimes prayer and, and our answers to prayer are yes, no, wait. We've heard that before. Sometimes wait. So sometimes we get a, 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 an answer from God via prayer, but it's slow. Okay kind of like the endocrine system. Yeah, it gets there, but it's a little slow process. Sometimes we need stuff to happen now, and that's just like the nervous system. It happens now. So that, that, that's just scratching the surface of, of, of the way that our bodies just scream God's word. It is so obvious that there is a designer that put us together, and his word matches up with all of this. It's amazing. It's, it's awesome. So today, we're going to look at one aspect of that, particularly having to do with the immune system. Let's do this. Let's pray. And then we'll, and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for the opportunity uh, to be able to just be a part, a, a, again, uh, of, of getting into your word and, and showing how our bodies are so much an awesome reflection of the things that you had to say. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just be with me tonight. I'm going to try to convey these things and make them understandable. And hopefully to, to, to give people some things to think about, to give people some things to be able to discuss with other people uh, that maybe don't know you, to give them an opportunity to get to know you. Lord, I, I thank you again. Be with us tonight. And all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let me say this. My, my thought process tonight in terms of kind of how we go about this is, is uh, I, I don't want to just speak at you for a solid hour and a half. We're going we're gonna to talk about some things and kind of divide us up in a specific way. We're going to get into some biblical things, laying a foundation for the physiological, biological things that we're going to discuss. We'll take a little bit of a break. We'll come back, hit those physiological things, and then put everything together. So let's get started. So unforgiveness and the physical body. And I want to begin with this uh, really, really long word called, psych, called psychoneuroimmunology. Um, love doing this with my students. Because one of the things that I, I talk about in class is medical terminology. It, it's, a, it's a language in and of itself, right? You, you have to learn this as you're in the medical field. And so I'll, draw, I'll write words on the board that are even longer than that one. And it's cool to see students on day one freak out. <laughs> But then by the end, they're not as intimidated, right, by these long words. Because what we learn in medical terminology is, the, is how to break these words down to their individual parts, and then they're not so intimidating, they're not so difficult. So we can do that here with this, with this word. Psych is, a, is what we call a root word that means mind, M-I-N-D, it's the, it's the mind. Neur, so that next part of that word, N-E-U-R, 
is a word that means ner having to do with the nervous system, literally nerve, but it has to do with the nervous system as a whole. And then immune has to do with the immune system. Last part of that word, L-O-G-Y, is the study of. So when we look at this long word, psychoneuroimmunology, what we're saying is that it's the study of the mind, the nervous system, and the immune system. And basically what we're saying here is that there is a link between how we see the world, how we take in information, right, the mind, and the immune system and how it functions. This study began, really began back in about the 1960s and it became more popularized in the 70s and even more in the 80s and it's gotten even bigger and bigger as the, as the decades have gone by. But the awesome thing about this is that, you know, that now that we've discovered this link within the past hundred years or, or fewer, the Bible's talked about this for thousands of years. So let's look at that today. First of all, I want to just let you know that there's something wrong with the way that we think. There's something wrong with the way that we see the world, that we naturally see the world. And I think we can see that from Romans 12 too. And this is a verse that I think that we, we, we pretty much know. A lot of you could probably just quote this, right? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may, be, may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible would never have told us that we need to renew our mind if we thought correctly. If we saw things the right way to begin with, there would be no need to renew our mind. So since scripture tells us, you know what, you need to renew your mind. Okay, that tells me there's something wrong with my initial way of seeing the world. And the thing about that is, is that we, we have this way of thinking, we have this way of, of, of looking at things and what makes sense to us. But what we've got to do is learn how to use God's wisdom and not our own. And that can be a difficult thing to do. Because, again, with our earthly way of thinking, our natural way of thinking, some stuff in the Bible doesn't make sense. Right? Romans 12, 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Huh? Why would I do that? Someone's persecuting me, and you want me to bless them? That's dumb, right? That, that, that doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? Later on in that same chapter is where uh, Paul gives us that verse that I think we are all very familiar with as well. Vengeance is mine, saith Lord, I will repay. Right? He's, he's referencing, he's making reference to a scripture in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, that says, right, God speaking here, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. The thing about vengeance that we want to have, right, it belongs to God, but we want to take it. I think sometimes we, we, we never say this, but we want vengeance because God's not going to do it right. God's not going to do it the way that I want it to be done. So we're, we're, that's what we're saying. We're not saying it, but that's what we're saying. God's not going to take vengeance like I need it to be taken, like I want it to be done. And the interesting thing about this verse, too, again, Deuteronomy 32, 35, is that it says their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Again, going back a little bit further, their foot shall slide in due time. We want vengeance in our time. Like someone does something against me, I want them to pay. And and, and by the way, Lord, if, if you if you want some suggestions, uh, uh, this is how they should pay. And 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 I want them to pay now. And that's not how God operates, right? That that's not how He works. And here's here's the thing about that too. I, it, it it reminds me of of Jonah, right at the end of the book where he's mad at God because he didn't just obliterate the people of Nineveh. Right? He's, he's mad about that. And we're the same way. right? When vengeance isn't taken the way we want it, when we want it, how we want it, sometimes we can be upset about that. Instead of being how God would have us to be 
and sometimes being long-suffering like he is. You never know what God is doing in someone's life. You never know what God could do in someone's life. You know, I, I, I think about Paul. And we can see evidence uh, in, in Acts chapter 9. We know who Paul was, right? When he was Saul. He persecuted Christians. He imprisoned Christians. He stood there while Stephen was stoned. And then he got saved on the road to Damascus. And when he was brought into the church, some people looked at him and were like, uh, don't you know who this dude is? That's the Brian paraphrase, by the way. <laughs> right? Can you, can you imagine people seeing Paul and knowing who he was, what he did, being fearful of him, being mistrusting of him, and as a result, okay, we got to put him out. Uh, we can't. Mm -mm, can't do this. He can't be a part of us. He can't be a part of the church. Where would we be today? How much of our New Testament would we have or not have? Paul being instrumental in getting the, in getting the gospel to Europe, which eventually got it here so that we could have salvation. Where would we be if people took vengeance like they wanted to have it instead of God saying, you know what? No, vengeance is mine. It's for me to take care of in my time. We have people that have done wrong to us. Absolutely. But it's not for us to say how that is taken care of. If we allow God to be God, God can do some amazing things within a situation and with people that we could never fathom. Who would have fathomed that Saul would have done what he did? There's people in our lives like that as well, that God can still work with and work through. Um, there's a verse in particular for me that was huge, uh, and that's Matthew 5.44. It's on your screen as well. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them, which despitefully use you and persecute you. Again, right, with our natural psyche mind, right, how we see things. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. It doesn't make sense. Why would I pray for someone that's despitefully using me and persecuting me. That doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. You need to renew your mind. You need to change the way you think. So one of the things I, I typically do in, in, these, in these circles with this is I, I like to give a specific testimony. Because every one of us that are in this, this ministry, this Fruit of Forgiveness ministry, definitely have our own forgiveness testimony. And I want to give you mine so in, in 2009, uh, my, my wife of, t of 10 years, uh, we're just short of our, just a couple months short of our 11th uh, wedding anniversary, uh, I had discovered that she had been having an affair. And she had uh, been involved uh, with uh, this, this other man for a year by the time that I found out. When I found out, uh, uh, the, there was just a myriad of emotions. Um, I was angry. I was sad. I was depressed, I felt betrayed. I mean, and all these things at the same time, it was absolutely the worst experience of my life. And for the next two and a half months, we still stayed together, we lived together, we sought counseling, uh, but during that counseling, she would still lie and see him and I'd catch her. She'd lie, I'd catch her, she'd lie, I'd catch her, she'd call him, I'd catch her. And there's so many different things until one day she just left. Uh, and I'll, I'll never forget it. There's a lot about that stuff I'll never forget. Uh, but it was a Saturday. She had come home from she had come home from the store. My neighbor came came to my house just before she got back home, and told me that they saw her with this guy in the park in the parking lot at the store. So I confronted her about it. She lied about it, and I tell I said so and so saw you. And at that time, she went in the house, she grabbed some stuff, she got in her car and drove away. And I, and I, I just knew, this was two and a half months after I found out. I can't tell you exactly how I knew, but I just, I knew that was it. She's not coming back. And she didn't. She never did. Uh, that was a Saturday. That next, that next Monday, she came back to the house. I remember coming home from work and she was making dinner like it was any other day. And she, she told, she said that she was going to announce to the kids the decision that she had made. 
Um, I remember sitting on the couch, our, our three kids sitting on the, floor, on the floor facing her as she was sitting to my right. And she told them what the decision that she had made. And, uh, and, and right there is obvious questions that the kids were asking. They were bawling, all three of them, as you may guess. And then she walked out the door. And I'm left there with three small kids who have just been blindsided and they're incredibly sad. And I'm just sitting there thinking, what am I gonna do? Um, I was angry. And I'll say there was a certain point in time that I was angry at God. And I think that that's an important thing to be able to be okay saying. God knows anyway. So to go ahead and say that to him, you're not going to hurt his feelings, right? And so to get those things out is important. I, I journaled every day of those two and a half months because I was convinced that my marriage was going to be healed. I, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, right? It was going to be hard. It was going to be hard. It was going to be rocky. It was going to be ups and downs, but I wanted to document it because I wanted to be able to show people, look at what God did. And, and so I had three notebooks full of journals. And, and um, I had planned on, during that two and a half month period of time, of taking those journals and, and turning them into a book. That was the ultimate goal. But again, I said, I was, I was mad at God. And I, I remember a couple days after she left, at one point in time, standing in the living room by myself, and I just looked up at the ceiling, and I said, why? I screamed, why? And I, I, I said to God, this wasn't supposed to happen. Why did you let this happen? I was angry. I took those journals and I put them on the floor in the middle of my living room. And that was very, it was intentional. It was almost like a, a symbolic kind of a thing. With my Bible, by the way. And I didn't pray. And I didn't read my Bible for three days. Never done that before. I haven't done it since. I was mad. And I would intentionally step over them day after day after day. And then one day it hit me. And I really felt like that this book thing was, was something that God wanted me to do. And there's this story behind that. I don't have time to go through the whole story today. But but um, but I I thought to myself, God knew then when he put writing that book on my heart to do what was going to happen. So why don't I just trust God now with this? So that's what I decided to do. And I picked up my Bible and I picked up those journals and renewed my relationship with God and continued to move forward. And it was hard, but I still did it. And I'll say this, the, the reason why, the main reason why I have the relationship with God that I have now and the closest that, closeness that I have with God now is because of that time in my life. Mm -hmm. Because I learned to hold on to him in a different way than I had, a, had before. And the Bible talks about that, right? We, we can get closer to God through trials, through struggles. That's the way that God works. And so trusting God in those things is what brought me closer to him, was saved already, yeah, but, man, but spiritually mature right, now. Right. I remember one day just reading through my, reading through my Bible, just regular Bible reading, and, and I came across this verse in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, and, 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 you know, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. And, and I knew I needed to forgive her. I remember reading that. And I stopped. And I said out loud, I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want to do that. But I decided to do it because I knew that that's what God would have me to do to be obedient. Uh, and I'll tell you, that first prayer was not much of a prayer. It was definitely, strictly, God, you're forcing me to do this. Okay, I'm going to do it. And it was short and sweet and to the point. And, and the more I began to pray for her, the more heartfelt the prayers became. And the more I prayed for her, the more God changed me. <clears throat> 
think that's what part of that is, right? That pray, praying for someone in order to forgive them. I remember uh, one day she came back to the house because of something that one of the kids did. Uh, my, my, my oldest uh, child, who was typically the one that, if one of them's gonna get in trouble, it's gonna be him. Uh, he did something at school and, and we wanted to talk to him together. So she came to the house, we talked to him together and then he went to his room and uh, she was still sitting in the living room. I can't tell you how long this was between the time I found out about the affair and later on, but I remember looking at her and I've been praying for her for a while now. And I remember looking at her and, and just kind of doing inventory of, of what am I feeling? What's, what's there? And I thought, I'm not feeling anger. I'm not feeling sadness. I'm not feeling depressed. I'm not feeling anything. And I actually looked at her and I said, can I hug you? And I, and I did that because again, I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to test this. How am I feeling? And I gave her a hug and there was nothing there. And I remember that being kind of the moment that I thought to myself, okay, I have forgiven her. Uh, I was concerned about a lot of things during that time. I remember thinking, because I had two boys and one girl, and I remember thinking, how am I going to teach my daughter how to be a lady? That was one of my huge concerns. And I remember the, that, that Sunday. So she left on, on a Saturday, and that Sunday morning, next morning, got up. We're, going, we're still going to church. So I got all the kids together. I remember going to my daughter's room. She was four years old. And I, and I knocked on the door and I said, I said, uh, Taylor, time to get up. We need to get ready, get ready for church. And we would let her pick out her own clothes. And I said to her, you can wear, you can wear like jeans and a t-shirt. You know, don't worry about a dress today. And she said this, and, and she said, okay, dad, I trust you. Like, why would my four-year-old say that out of nowhere? Like I, I, when she said that, that was like God speaking to me through my little girl, just saying that, okay, God's here. God's got me. God's got us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to, he's going to, he's, he can handle this. You know, one of the things I, I, one of the reasons why I think people don't want to forgive, right? We've been, been commanded to forgive. I think one of the reasons why people don't want to forgive is somehow they think it should be instantaneous. So I, I, someone has harmed me. Someone has hurt me. I know I'm supposed to forgive, uh, but man, I just can't do that. Oh, well, just not going to do it. Forgiveness is not always an instantaneous thing where you can just say, I forgive you, and then everything is gone and everything is great. Uh, sometimes, a lot of times, it's a process. And for me, it was a process. And it began with prayer. I would say to you, even though there's some things in God's word that you look at and you think, that doesn't make sense, right? God said it. Believe it. Trust him in it. Do it. It works. Amen. When I began to pray for her, I thought it, it started to come to my mind the things that she had lost. She had lost her family. She had lost her home. She had lost her church family. She had lost her, her side of the family was very angry with her. So many things that she had lost. And so those are the things I began to see, right, as I began to pray for her. Um, sometimes we want to wait or think we should wait for that person to apologize. When they come to me and they admit wrong, when they come to me and they apologize, then I'll forget. Nope, doesn't work that way. I always think about Christ on the cross, right? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Did, did we read about people going to the cross and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I, I messed up? No, we don't see that. We don't read that. He just offered forgiveness anyway. Even though there are many people out there that still haven't accepted that, he still offers it. Uh, it's, been, it's been, we divorced in 2009, right? This is 2024. She has yet to admit any wrongdoing. She may never. That's okay. That's okay. That's not about me and her. That's between her and God at this point. Right? That's, that's, how, that's how it should be. Forgiveness does not mean you have to maintain the same type of relationship with that person as well. In some cases, it might be dangerous to do so. It doesn't mean you don't forgive. You still need to forgive. Forgiveness does not mean that I'm saying what you did to me was okay or excusing what you did to me. 
uh, but that doesn't mean you don't forget. It's important still to do so. Romans 6.23, we know this verse, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the reason why I bring that up is, is even though people may not come to Christ and ask for forgiveness and get saved, the wages of sin is still death. That doesn't change the fact that what we are doing is wrong. So just because we offer forgiveness, it doesn't change what they did was wrong. It just means that your reaction to it is biblical, which is how it should be. So lots of things, right, that we could talk about having to do with forgiveness, but we're going to begin to start working our way towards what does our body and our immune system in particular have to do with all of that. Let's look at some immune system effects, and particularly starting off again with Scripture, what the Scripture has to say about this. So Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keeping God's word is healthy. Okay. So listening to God's word is healthy for us. Uh, and, and specifically is what it says here is, is, is right, listen to, to what I'm saying, right? Incline your ear unto my sayings. So remember that typically, especially if you're a parent, how many times have you looked at your kid and said, and said you're not listening to me, right? When we say that, what we're really saying is, you didn't do what I told you to do, right? So when, we, when the Bible talks about listen to what I'm saying, do what I'm telling you to do, right? We do things according to God's word. It's going to make us healthy. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. And 5 and 6 are very common, right? Again, I'm sure that if I ask somebody in here randomly, right, quote Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6, a lot of you probably do it like that, right? But let's look at this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Oh, don't do stuff because it makes sense to you. Uh, and remember, that's coming off of the scripture that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It says, do not wise thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. I remember reading that for the first time after knowing the things I know now as a nurse. And that just, just jumped off the page. And I was just fascinated by that. Um... When we trust God and we use his wisdom and not our own, it keeps us healthy. And here's an interesting thing for me. Why did Solomon specifically say that it's marrow to our bones? That's weird. Like, why, why, would, you, why would you say that? Well, because a large part of our immune system comes from bone marrow. How would he have known that? Here, here, here's, here's my thought. Probably because the Word of God is inspired by God. And I think that this is one of the many places in which we can see that. Um, I, I've used that before with, with my fellow nurses and medical assistants and pointing things out like this and say, okay, the Bible's been talking about this for literally millennia. Right? There's no, we just found this out like 100 years ago. You can't tell me this was an accident. Right? It's going to be marrow to your, to your bones. That's just an odd, weird thing to say, unless it's true. Unless there's something to it. So I believe that that definitely does speak to the authenticity of God's word. I don't think there's any way Solomon could have known that. Uh, let's, let's talk about bone marrow here for a second. Uh, and, then, and then what I want to do is, is actually give you a little bit of a break. And then we'll come back and talk about, again, some more physiological things about how the body works. So there's bone marrow. There's two different, and our bones don't look exactly like that. <laughs> Just a picture. Um, but there's two different types of bone marrow. There's red bone marrow and there's yellow bone marrow. And bone marrow, so the yellow bone marrow, is this inside portion of long bone in particular, is where our immune system comes from. All these different types of cells come from there. Not the only place. But that's one of the main places in which it comes from. 
So uh, at, at, at that point, let's pause there. I want to give you a 10 minute break. All right. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's pick it up where we lost. Let's talk, left off. Let's talk about leukocytes. So again, we're, we're, we're going to get into some, some, some body stuff here. So we start off with this fancy long word, psychoneuroimmunology. This one isn't as intimidating, but I want to break it down for you again, similarly to what we did with the first big real long word. LUK, L-E-U-K, is a word, a part that means white. It just means white. Cyte, C-Y-T-E, means cell. So a leukocyte is a white blood cell. It's the technical term for a white blood cell. And again, white blood cells are all about our immune system, right? They, they fight infection, various different kinds of infection. And what I've listed for you here are five specific types. Now, we can go beyond these five, and I'm gonna list even more after this screen. And even after all the ones that I'm gonna list, I'm still not listing them all. Our bodies are amazingly intricate and specific in the way they function, and in particular, how the immune system functions. So these are kind of kind of five of the major ones. I've got neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, uh, basophils, and eosinophils. And what I've listed next to them are, are the things that they mm. primarily fight against. Again, this is not an exhaustive list, but this is kind of real, just keeping it basic. So neutrophils are a specific type of white blood cell that fight bacteria. Again, not just that, but that's one of the primary things they do. So example, if you have a bacterial infection, what your body will do is it will produce more neutrophils in order to fight that particular type of infection. Lymphocytes, as you can see, viruses are there. So yes, if you have a viral infection, you've got a cold, your body will produce an increased number of lymphocytes to fight that particular type of infection. Monocytes, I have up there surveillance, and I'm going to explain that further in a, in a little bit. Uh, basophils, a specific type of a white blood cell that has to do with the inflammatory process. Uh, and then eosinophils, another type of white blood cell that has to do with parasites and allergens. Again, not an exhaustive list, but basically kind of what these white blood cells do. So even looking at just that, right, it's, it's, it's our body is catches so many different types of infections, uh, it, it functions very well and very intricately. Let's continue, and what I want to do is I want to take you through a specific type of viral process. So in other words, what happens in our bodies when a specifically a virus gets inside you? In particular, one that your body is being exposed to for the first time. Because if, it's, if your body has seen it before, then it's a whole different process. But when you're exposed to this virus for the first time, what does your body do to take that thing out? Right? What is its process? Well, it starts off, again, with these things called monocytes. Uh, a, a monocyte, as I said before on the previous screen, it carries out surveillance. So you can think about monocytes as like police officers on patrol. So it's going to just go around the bloodstream looking for stuff that's not right, looking for stuff that shouldn't be there. Um, and if it finds something that shouldn't be there, it's going to make the decision. Can I handle this on my own or do I need to call in for backup? Like quite literally. So a monocyte can actually grow if it decides it wants to take care of this thing on its own. It can grow to, to the size of what we call a macrophage. Let me break that word down for you as well. Macro is the opposite of micro. So microscopic things I can't see with the naked eye. Macroscopic things I can see with the <coughs> naked eye. So if you think about cells, right, you think always think of cells as something I need a microscope to see. There's two cells of our, in our bodies that we can actually see with the naked eye. Egg cells is one, macrophages are another. Phage means to eat. So what these things literally do is they grow to be able to engulf or eat numerous amounts of cells at once to take care of an infection. It can engulf or eat as many as 100 viruses at once. 
That being said, viruses are really tiny. And by the way, this picture down here, that's, a, that's an example of a virus. They're nasty looking things, aren't they? Scary looking, like that's in your nightmare somewhere. Um, but that's an example of a virus. So these things can grow really big and engulf uh, like a hundred or so viruses at once. But let's say there's more than that. There's more than, than, than this thing can handle. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna call in for backup. By the way, we have something on each one of our cells, and if you look at it in a textbook, it typically calls it a, a fingerprint on each cell. It's called MHC. Uh, I didn't plan on talking about that, but it stands for Major Histocompatibility Complex. Not asking you to remember that. <laughs> MHC, much easier, right? But, but what that is, is it's something on your cells that lets your immune system know that that's part of you. So again, as it's take, going on patrol, as it's carrying out surveillance, it's really easy for, for this monocyte to say, okay, yep, that's you, that's you, yep. Uh-uh, right? It doesn't take long at all to figure for them to figure it out. So it decides, e, yeah, this is too much. Uh, I, I need some help here. So what it does is it'll send out a chemical message to call in for these cells that are called helper T cells. Helper T cells. And by the way, this chemical message that it sends is called a monokine. That's why I have that on the side there. So the chemical message called a monokine, that message goes out to these helper T cells. Helper T cells come to the area and they further assess. How do we need to handle this? I know, I'll call in the killers. And so the helper T cells will send out a chemical message that's called a lymphokine. And that chemical message calls in killer T cells. Killer T cells, pay attention, because this is difficult to understand. Killer T cells kill. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm a gifted teacher, so don't, don't try this at home. Uh, but but that's, all th that's all they do. So once they're called, they're coming in and they're guns blazing. They're shooting first, asking questions later. They're just, they, they know the reason why they're called is something needs to be taken out. So they're coming in and they're finding the viruses and they're taking them out. They're killing them, killing them, killing them, killing them. And they continue to do this until suppressor T cells come in. And what suppressor T cells do is they let them know, okay, it's time to stop. I always think about this. I remember when, um, when we first, so I was born in Kansas City, uh, lived in Kansas City until 79. <clears throat> in 79, we moved to Springfield. Uh, all of our family was still here, but we moved back to Kansas City in 86. Uh, and in 86, I was in sixth grade. Uh, it was a brand new school, right? I didn't know anybody. Uh, all, everything was new. And so I'm riding the bus from this sixth grader uh, low man on the totem pole, right? It's middle school, so it's six, seven, and eight. So low man on the totem pole, and I know no, no, I know nobody. <laughs> English. Um, uh, uh, so I remember being being bullied by uh, this kid that was older than me, like day after day after day. And one day he turned around and he did something to me, and I just stood up and I went like, <laughs> just, just. <laughs> I lost it. This is the image that I get in my head when I think about killer T cells, right? They kill, they kill, they kill, they kill, they kill, they kill. And sometimes in the case of, right, if you're fighting, I know no one here has experienced that. But maybe you, 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 you've been fighting at some point in time in your life and someone had to get in your face and say, stop, right? It, okay, it's over. That's the image that I get in my head with these suppressor T cells because the killer T cells are going to keep killing until they're told to stop. And the suppressor T cells is what tell them to do that. So once everything is settled, suppressor T cells say, okay, it's all good. And then at the end, memory T cells come in and they remember. As I said before, it's a different process when you've seen this virus a second time a third time, a fourth time. So this whole process here can take up to 10, 12 days, right? And we've all been sick with the virus, and it just sticks with you. So we're talking about from the time 
that enters your body and begins to replicate, and, and from the time it first enters until the time you have symptoms can be days. So the whole process from beginning to end can take like two weeks. But if you've seen it, if this your body has seen this multiple times before, because of these memory T cells and what they start, the process they start, your body has made antibodies that are specifically designed to take out that specific virus. So when it comes into the body a second time or multiple times before, uh, again, the body recognizes it instantly, uses the antibody that's designed for that specific virus, takes it out, and the whole process is two to three days before you even ever have a, system, a symptom, you would never know it was there. <coughs> body just takes care of it. Here's, here's the interesting thing about macrophages, and, and, and one of the things that we know based on this study called psychoneuroimmunology, and that is that macrophages are more sluggish when we're sad. They're more sluggish when we're sad. Remember, we took you through this whole process, and we said that the whole process starts with macrophages. So if the macrophages are sluggish and they're not functioning as they should, then we're going to have a difficult time getting over illness, in particular viral, viral illnesses. So when we get stuck on that person did this to me, and because of that, I'm not trusting God and doing what God's word would have me to do, but I'm gonna stick with the anger, I'm gonna stick with the sadness, I'm gonna stick with the frustration, you are literally crippling your immune system. It's not going to function the way God designed it. There's a reason why he said, you know what, vengeance is mine. You don't worry about it. You let me worry about it. Trust in the things I say. Yeah, I want you to pray. There's a reason why he's saying these things because then we're letting it go we're allowing him to deal with it. And then there's health to us. There's marrow to our bones. When we allow God's word to be in us and renew our minds and allow our bodies to work the way he designed them to work. Macrophages. There's another type of cell that's called a natural killer cell. These are cool. Natural killer cells. So they're called natural killer cells because unlike T killer cells, natural killer cells don't have to be called to kill. They're kind of a cross between T killer cells and monocytes. So they do, they carry out their own surveillance. And when they see something that's not right, they'll take it out. Natural killer cells, I put the list up there earlier about the different types of white blood cells and what they specifically are adept at, at taking out. Natural killer cells have the ability to take out cancer cells. Interesting how we have cells, white blood cells that are specifically designed for cancer. One of the things that, that I think a lot of people don't know is that we have the ability to make cancer cells literally every single day just from exposure to the sun. But the way that our bodies are designed is that when we go to bed at night, uh, one of the things that happens is we have this flood of growth hormone, right? Even though we're grown adults and we're stopped growing, uh, I'm sad about that. But, um, but we have uh, this, this flood of growth hormone. What growth hormone does with us uh, as adults is it, is, it, is it heals all of those things, all of those mutations that occur because of, uh, because of the sun, it takes care of all that stuff, and then we wake up the next day new, ready to take on the next day. God's mercies are new every morning. That's what I think, that's the scripture I think about when I think about what growth hormone does for us, is, is it just renews that every single day. So uh, one of the things that we know about natural killer cells, a couple of things, right? is that they're more sluggish when we're sad and they increase in number with laughter. So I, and I'll always say this and, and it, it, it may sound goofy, but I just want to make sure I'm covering my bases here. 
Uh, not saying that if you have cancer, what you should do is just stream, stream a couple comedies at home, watch them, and then you're going to be fine. Right? I'm not saying that. Right? Do what your doctor tells you to do. But what I am saying is, uh, along with what I just said to you and how the body functions with growth hormone and along with these, these particular types of white blood cells, how many cancers would not be allowed to grow and grow and grow? if we lived our lives according to God's word. So that, 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 that typical, just normal mutation that occurs because we were exposed to the sun that happens to all of us, and now we have this little thing somewhere over here that's beginning to become cancerous, and, and then what happens is we go to bed at night, body takes care of it, it's gone, you wake up new the next day, but because you're bitter and you're angry and you're holding on to that, that bitterness and frustration, the body can't do what it's designed to do. So the cancer grows and grows and grows. And now you have cancer. Now, I want to say this as well. I'm not saying that if you have cancer or someone you know has cancer or has had cancer, it's because you didn't trust God. I can't say that. I don't know that. Sometimes God allows certain things into our lives. And he allows those things into our lives because he wants to grow us up or he wants to use us to meet somebody else and, 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 and bring someone else to Christ that maybe we would not have met if it wasn't for that. Right? God uses us in so many different ways. But, but if we would trust him in everything. And, and we would trust his word and what it says and not necessarily look at these things and think, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense, but instead say, God, you said it, I'll do it, I trust you. Then physically, immune system-wise, our body is going to function in the way God intended it to. Let's talk about this, this thing called Im immunoglobulin A, or IgA. <clears throat> IgA is an immunoglobulin, and there's a few of them out there. There's about five or six of them I, off the top of my head. I couldn't remember which number I could go through, but that's okay. I'm going to specifically talk about this one, though. And my own definition, I, I tell my students all the time, I, I'm, I'm about making stuff simple. I try to make stuff simple as best I can when, when I can. And a, and a basic definition I like to give about IgA is that it plugs the holes. It plugs the holes. So imagine... You're on a boat, right? And the boat begins to take on water. And uh, you look and you notice that there's holes in the boat. So you have a bucket and you, you're, you're trying to bail out the water as fast as you can. And as fast as you're bailing, the boat's still filling up with holes. I'm sorry, still filling up with water. Why is it still filling up with water? Because the holes are still there. The, the holes are still there, yes. right? Maybe if I plug the holes first and then bail, I might get somewhere. Here's what the body does, and it's annoying, and we hate it. But when we're sick, ears get plugged up, and your nose gets plugged up, and you can't smell anything, and you can't taste anything, and everything is like cardboard, and it's like, oh, I wish I could just breathe. It's, and it's like, ah, oh, right? It, it drives you crazy. <laughs> but, what, but what the body is doing is, right, it says, okay, let's shut this down, let's shut this down so that the immune system can fight what's in there mm -hmm. instead of trying to fight what's in there and stuff keeps coming in and it can't catch up. So the body plugs the holes so it can fight what's in there and then once the immune system has things under control, then it allows things to open back up. IgA. One of the things that we know about immunoglobulin A is that it increases with laughter. So so many different aspects about what our immune system does in various different places. And notice how all of it functions properly when we're doing things according to what God's word says. <clears throat> Instead of being stuck on being angry and being bitter. Let's look at these things called cytokines. By the way, I hope I left enough room in your notes for you to write stuff down. Sometimes I feel like, if I give them enough room. <laughs> Cytokines. Cytokines are chemical messengers. We mentioned a couple of these already. Right? We talked about monokines. We said that a, a macrophage is going to send out a chemical message that's called a monokine. It's going to call in the helper T cells. That's how they get there is by this chemical message that this, mono, that this monocyte sends. 
and then the T helper cell, when it comes, is going to send out a chemical message called a lymphokine that's going to call in the killer T cells <coughs> so they can come in and do their job. Collectively, these are called cytokines. And cytokines, uh, production is increased with laughter. So here's an interesting thing. Right? Let's put some of these things together. We said already that when we're sad, macrophages are more sluggish. So remember we said that was the way that the whole process starts, is with the macrophages and the message they send. So we have a double whammy here. When we're, when we're sad and we're deep and down in that depression, not only are the macrophages sluggish, but the message they're sending to call in the things that's actually gonna do the job is not quite getting there either. Uh, I, typically, that person that is stuck in bitterness, that person that is stuck in depression and stuck in sadness and are not trusting God with the things that God would have them to do, they're typically sick more often and they're going to be sick longer. It's going to take them a longer time to get over illness because, I know I said it before, I'm going to say it again, they are crippling their immune system by their lack of trust in God and what God's word has to say. All right. <clears throat> so, so, go ahead and go to the next slide. Please don't, yeah, don't, don't, so don't worry, be happy. It's always what I think about with this particular verse. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I feel like this verse really takes everything that we've laid out so far and put it in one verse. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Right now that we've seen all the things that we've talked about up to this point, hopefully that verse is like, whoa. In that, I, I just, that is so amazingly awesome to me that, that God inspired Solomon to write that verse the way he wrote it. When we're happy, when we're <clears throat> cheerful, Right? And trusting God and things that he does. God, I don't know why this is going on, but I'm praising you anyway. Because mm -hmm. I know you got it. Mm -hmm. I have a merry heart. <laughs> I have a merry heart. And because I have a merry heart, regardless of the situation that I'm in, it's just like medicine. Because I have within my immune system the ability to fight bacteria, viruses, uh, mold, fungus, parasites, allergens inflammation issues, cancer. The medicine is there. It's there. And as long as we have a merry heart, the medicine is there. But when we're broken and we're living in that and we're resting in that, your bones are dry. And where does the immune system come from? The bones. That's not an accident. God knows how we function how we function because he did it, right? He made it. He, he designed it. So this tells us how we should be. If we live our lives according to God's word, our immune system functions the way God intended it to. And it really is just that simple. I want to point out just some, some additional things that we can see from this as well. Proverbs 14 and uh, uh, verse 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. If you look at this word sound, right, a sound heart, it's a Hebrew word, uh, I should say it comes from a Hebrew word that, uh, that, that speaks about or having to do with healing or a cure. So again, this is a medical term, a sound heart, right? It is, is life to the flesh, but envy, right? All I can do is look at what, what he has, and I wish I could have that. Or being angry because of what he has or what she has, and that's all I can think about, and I just, I'm, just, I'm just living in that. I'm crippling my immune system. It's rottenness to my bones. 
There's a reason why we've been commanded to be content with what we have. When we're not content and we're envious, it's hurting our ability to stay healthy. All right, Proverbs 15, 30. Here's another one. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. An odd thing to say. Good report makes bones fat. What? <laughs> so as, as a nurse, one of my goals with each one of my patients was, was once I got done talking with them and I left the room, I wanted to either make them laugh or make them smile. It's always been a goal of mine with every patient. As a nurse, right, not a nurse practitioner, right, but <laughs> as a nurse, I can't write a prescription. I, I, I can't just call in a prescription on my own because I feel like it. But if I can make them laugh or make them smile, it's almost, I won't say the same thing, but it's going to help them in the same way because I'm giving them a good report. I'm, I'm, I'm saying good things to them, and that's going to help boost their immune system. It's going to make their bones fat. One of the things I love, uh, and, and I, if you've been around me for a while, you've probably heard me say this before. I love, and I wish we would do more often, I say it all the time, uh, have, have a time of testimony where, where we just take some time out and just have people give testimonies. What's God doing, doing in your life? Because what are we doing? We're hearing good report after good report after good report after good report. And what is that doing for the body? I'm talking the body of Christ, right? It's making our bones fat. It's making us healthy because we're just hearing good reports. Smiles are contagious even, right? You look at somebody and smile, and most time they're going to smile back at you. Most of the time. <laughs> if they don't, just walk away. Just, just walk away. <laughs> Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bone. Same thing, right? Pleasant words. Telling someone you miss them. Telling someone you love them. Telling someone they look nice, right? Just being kind to someone verbally so they can hear it, right? It just, it, it makes you feel good and it literally boosts your immune system. It's health to your bones. The Bible says it over and over and over again. It's not one accident verse in one place. It's over and over and over again. God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So, question for you. I, I would ask you, how are your thoughts? What are the kinds of things that you are thinking on? Here's a, a, a portion of scripture that was very instrumental to me. Philippians Four, six through eight, and again, I think you all are probably very familiar with this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Let's look at this scripture, this portion of scripture. First of all, I would say make sure you take your cares to God in prayer. Whatever it is. I, I kind of I said that before, but, but it, he knows already. Why don't you just tell him? If, if it hurts, tell him. If you're angry, tell him. If you're frustrated, if you're depressed, if you're upset, right? Whatever adjective you want to put there that's negative, tell him. Tell him. Could one of the reasons why you don't have peace be that you don't talk to him? Mm -hmm. About those issues that you've got? About the anger that's there? About the bitterness that's trying to well up that we don't want to become a root, right? Mm -hmm. So tell him, take these things to God in prayer. In your prayer, make sure that you include 
thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Being able to go to God in the midst of all the mess and still be able to say, Lord, I know this is going on, but thank you for it. That is a good reminder to me, a good reminder to you that he's still working. He's still there. He's still blessing. And if you can remember that he's still working, he's still there, he's still, there, he's still blessing, then you can have hope, Romans 5, 3 through 5. You can have hope that he's going to come through again. Right? <clears throat> With your prayer, make sure that there's thanksgiving. So what are you thinking on? Have you ever thought about this? If, if I am stuck in vengeance mode, right? I've got to get them back. They need to pay. i got to figure out how. I need to figure out when I'm going to do this, what's going to be the best thing to make them hurt, like they, like they hurt me, all these different kind of things. In order to maintain that, do you realize you have to rehearse in your mind yeah. over and over and over again what that person did to you? In order to maintain that type of anger, yeah. you're meditating on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And when you're rehearsing that, you're rottening your bones, mm -hmm. and you're rottening your bones, and you're rottening your bones. Because we're focusing and we're thinking on the wrong things. God never told us to do that. He never told us to do that. So what are you, what are you thinking on? I, I heard someone say this once, if, if I had a glass of water and I was to ask you how, how heavy is that, that water, uh, maybe the, the, the answer to that question would be, or maybe to answer that question with the question is, uh, how long are you holding on to? If I have a glass of water and I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to it, that thing could weigh eight, eight ounces. Maybe let's, let's give it a pound, one pound. But the longer I hold on to it, I don't care how strong you are, at some point in time, I'm gonna not have the ability to continue to hold my arm out like this and hold on to that water. It's gonna begin to damage me over time. How long are you gonna hold on to the bitterness? How long are you gonna hold on to the anger? How long are you gonna hold on to those ill feelings towards that person because of what they did? It's hurting you heard someone say once as well, and this may be something that some of you have already heard of before, but, but unforgiveness or holding on to, hold, withholding forgiveness is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Because a lot of times, they move on. They, they've moved on with their life. They're doing what they want to do. They've not, they're not even thinking about what they did to you while you're sitting here meditating on how you're going to get them back. Meditating on the pain, meditating on the hurt, and those types of things while you are hurting yourself day after day after day. What are you thinking of? One of the things I, I love about, about this portion of scripture is Paul didn't only just say, um, um, so stop being full of care about stuff. Make sure you pray, take to God. Also, by the way, with that prayer, make sure it's prayer of thanksgiving uh, and you'll have peace. Bye. <laughs> Period. He, no, no, he said, oh, by the way, so, so let, 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 let's replace those negative thoughts with these things. He's giving you things to think about. And I remember the first time again when I, when I was uh, just regular Bible reading and I'm going through this stuff in my life and I'm seeing this and I saw this scripture in, in a different light, in a different way I've never seen it before. And I was like, he's given, he's given me things to think about, things to think on. So this is what I did. I took each one of those words, right? Tr uh, true, honest, just, <clears throat> pure, lovely, uh, of good report, and all those different types of things. And I went through the Bible. I looked up each one of those words in the Bible, uh, and, and I wrote out stuff in, in the Bible that was true and pure and lovely and good, good report and all those different types of things. And then, again, I did it again, but I went through the things in my life, in my own life, that I could say, oh, this is true. This is pure. This is lovely. So that when those thoughts would come in my head that would make me angry, that would make me... Uh, I had things prepared 
to think on. If, if you're in here and you're struggling, that's something just from my own experience that I would recommend you do. Take the time to look through these through the Bible and see where these words are used and see what's going on when these words are used. And take time to write some things out that you can think on, that you have prepared to think on so you don't get stuck in the middle of the pain. I'll... I, I always, and, 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 and this is always uh, still in my mind, uh, the, the thought that I wrote out for Lovely. Um, so, so when Taylor started kindergarten, at that time, my work schedule was such that I, that I, couldn't, I couldn't take her to school. It would have been too early. And so she rode the bus, but I had to leave before her bus came. So what I had to do every day was drive her to her mom's house which at this time was actually right around the corner. Drive her to her mom's house. She would catch the bus for her mom's house, go to school, like pick her up later, blah, blah, blah. And so we, we had this routine that we would do and actually started with her. Uh, I, I, would drive, I would drive around, get into her mom's driveway. She would, she would get out of the car and she'd walk, to walk towards the front door. She'd turn and she'd blow me a kiss. And and I I I catch it, and then I would blow a kiss back to her. She'd catch it. She would do this, and then she'd turn and walk the rest of the way to the door. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> that was a lovely thought, Amen. and that thought carried me through many a day, many a day. Um, so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, right? We've, we've, we've got those things in our lives, right, that, that, that we can use. If you're struggling with the anger and, and, and getting rid of those things that are hurting you while that other person is just off doing their own thing, get some things together prepared to think on so that you don't get yourself in that rut that's continuing to hurt you. I um, will say we'll say this one more thing about her. I didn't intend to say this either, but I keep talking. I keep thinking of other stuff. Um, uh, and I tell I tell this story from time to time. I remember one time that again in the, in the midst of, of all this stuff going on, and uh, we were on our way to church one Sunday, and she was still a little girl, uh, and we're driving to church, and it was a it was a morning kind of like. This morning was. Uh, the, the, the sky was dark, looked angry. And I remember looking up at the window, out of the window and saying, ooh, it looks like a storm's coming. And Taylor pokes up and she says, yay, that means there's going to be a rainbow. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, I said, okay, God. So this is to myself, right? I'm so focused on the storm. You promised that there's a rainbow. You, you, you've, you're, you're not going to allow anything to come into my life that's not common to man. But in, in that, you said that there's going to be, you're going to make a way to escape that I can bear, right? In 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 10, 13. You're going to make a way for me to bear. Mm -hmm. you, you, you said that, that, um, that, that everything, right, that, that you allow into my life is going to work out for my good. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the reason for that is you, so I can be conformed into the image of your son, right? Romans 8, 28, and 29. By the way, those are both, again, Brian paraphrases. <laughs> but so, 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 again, what does God's word say? What did God say? Do you believe it? Do you really? Because sometimes God allows trials into our lives to show us what we really believe, and what we just say we believe. So that's something to think about, right? We can, we can talk all the time about the scriptures that we can quote and, and the things that we've taught other people, the things we've said to other people. And I think sometimes God's sitting there looking at us and thinking, whatever, dude. Again, he probably doesn't talk like that. But, but See, he does. The, exactly. <laughs> oh, you should, I have some good Brian paraphrases. Um, but, but, but sometimes he allows us to see what we actually believe. And that, in so doing, 
he, we, we grow up that way and we, and we mature. But when we do things according to God's word, right, when we do what he would have us to do, as you can see with what we talked about today, our immune system functions the way God intended, and we have the ability to fight off almost anything that can come to us. It's pretty awesome in the way that it works. Um, that is my presentation for you. So again, thank you for your, your time. Thank you for listening. Announcements? Yes. I, I, I thought so. <laughs> Relinquish the floor. Well, I want to thank Ryan for the awesome presentation. And hopefully uh, you gained some good stuff out of that. Yeah. Good food. Yes. So uh, on the back table, there's some sign-in sheets. If you would, please go back there and put your name and email on it. You don't have to put your phone number down there, but it's your name and email, because we'd like to stay in touch with you. And so um, we, we started doing these series now in our own church, because we've been going to a lot of churches over the years, including El Salvador. We did one there. And so, uh, so we want to focus here, uh, because this is our home church, and our church supports us. So in your folder, you got one of these, and so uh, I encourage you, on the back side of this, this sheet, it's the podcast. There are episodes on here. There are 27 episodes. If you, whatever your uh, podcast hosts, um, we're, we're listed on pretty much all of them. So just go on your phone, go to podcast, download the app. And then on the back, you can choose any one of those episodes and listen to them. So they'll all be listed there. So that's a nice way of, of picking up um, the different speakers. And it's everything on there, everything on there. So coming up in November, uh, November 20th, will be my wife, Rosie. And I, Rosie's going to talk about changing the way you think. So I, I don't know how I married into this medical family, but um, you know we got him over here in the medicine, and then Rosie, she was in neurodiagnostic, the brain stuff. So she's going to talk about changing the way you think, and then and also in that in that uh, session, I'm going to talk about forgiveness in marriage. It doesn't mean it's just for married people; it's for those who want to get married, or you just you're set, you're happy with the way you are with the Lord as a single person. So that's going to come up November 20th. And then Janet Cross will, oh, there she is back here in the back. Janet Cross with the maroon shirt on. She's going to talk about forgiving self, forgiving others. And that'll be in January of 2025. So we're working out some things uh, with the class pastors. I've talked to Bill Johnson and, and Ron. We're working out some things where we will actually go to a class on a Wednesday night and do the presentation in the class. So that, that's going to be really good. So, uh, but thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, there's on that one paper it says we have a new website coming up. So I'm going to wrap up my conversation with this. Um, on that website right now, you can go on the website and you'll see it. But in a few days, that website's going to change because we're changing hosts. We were on the Share Faith host. But even our church was on the share faith. But somebody hacked, you know, the church website, and you couldn't get on it for a good while. So pastorally, they said, hey, we got to get off of that. So we're getting off of it, too, as, and save some money at the same time. So in the next few days, you're going to see a new website under uh, a different place called Squarespace. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, just follow us on, on the podcast. Follow us on the website. And, you know, we, we appreciate you guys just coming out. And, you know, invite some other people. You know, come back and invite some others. And if, if we have to, if we need to move into the sanctuary, we'll move into the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll do what's necessary, you know, because we want to talk about forgiving ourselves and forgiving others and then moving out of these traps that we're in. And so I want to thank Brian again for what he did. Thank Jim for running the computer back there. We, yeah. 
thank Marjorie for, Marjorie is our assistant, so she does all the typing and formatting and, and all that stuff. And my little wife for wearing me to death and killing me. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, when he was talking about cancer, so, so my cancer came back. So I, I defeated it, but God did it. God took care of it two years ago, and then it came back again. So, so I will be seeing my oncologist in the morning. But my guy, my guy knows. I said, look, I got God first, yeah. mm -hmm. and then I got you. And so when he talks about happiness, every time I think about Children's Mercy Hospital, all you see is colors, balloons, clowns. That they want the children to be happy. Yeah. And that's, that's me. That's what I want. I'm going to be happy because I've given it to God. He's going to take care of us. So like he says, don't worry, be happy. Right. All right, thank you so much for, for coming. I'm going to close us out with a word of prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much for the, what you've given us. Thank you so much for this awesome uh, session, Lord. We, we, uh, we just ask that you bless those who are here. Yes. Lord, whatever they may be going through or not going through, Lord, preferably they will give it to you. So, Lord, uh, use us for your glory and honor. Bring us back together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Don't forget to sign on my Right. <laughs> <laughs>